メジャー翻訳速報海外の反応へようこそドジャースが8対6でダイヤモンドバックスに勝利大谷ベッツフリーマンの3連続ホームランで幕開けエドマンの9回2点タイムリーで勝利を決定カスパリウスが初登板初勝利フリーマンは3安打2打点大谷は44号ホームラン激戦の末ドジャースが地区首位の座を6ゲーム差で維持しています今回はこちらを詳しく解説している番組をご紹介いたしますご感想などありましたらぜひコメント欄までお願いしますそれではご覧ください Welcome to Access Sportsnet Dodgers. I'm John Hartung alongside Nomar Garcia Parra, Adrian Gonzalez. Back to back wins for the Dodgers in the desert to start this four game series against the Diamondbacks. And it's back to back, really wild games that we've seen at Chase Field. A historic start for the Dodgers in this game because they started the game with home runs by Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, and then Freddie Freeman. Arizona answers with four in the first, and it was seesawing back and forth. 6 6 game. Ben Casperius, Major League. Debut works a one, two, three, and he gets a major league win in his debut. And then Tommy Edmond has first Dodger moment. A lot going on there, John. I could have done that. I mean, there really is. Game. You know, when you look at they jump out ahead early on, that was great to see. And then Gavin Stone just maybe struggled in that first inning. But I'll tell you what, you got to give a lot of credit to Gavin Stone because he settled down after that first inning and did only allowed one run after that for four more innings, which is really surprising. He came out after that with only 84 pitches. So that's kind of a head scratcher when you don't know, when you know that you don't have many people in your bullpen. Nonetheless, he did a tremendous job. Honeywell did the job. Casper. Did the job as well in the Dodger offense up and down the line. I love every spot in the lineup ended up getting a base hit. Yep. Yeah, I mean, just an incredible job again from the offense, but it all started with the back to back to back way to start the game there with、uh, Otani, Mookie Betts, and Freddie Freeman. What a way to get the game going right there, putting pressure on the On the D backs and, and Merrill Kelly, and they never looked back. They continued to put pressure on offense. Gavin Stone did give up a few runs in the first inning, but then he settled in nicely in the bullpen, did a great job. It was an incredible game. Way to, win the, way to tie the series, at least、uh, with this W. And、uh, looking for a series win tomorrow. All right, and Tommy Edmond has not been a Dodger for very long, but boy, he had a huge impact tonight. That two out, two strike, two run single to break the tie in the ninth inning. Right now, he's standing by with Kirsten Watson. Tommy, your go ahead single there late in the game. The game was on the line. What were you looking for when you're facing a pitcher who's high velocity pitching 103 miles per hour? Yeah, that guy's nasty. I was just trying to put something in play, to be honest. Our guys did a good job early in getting on base and, you know, just trying to give us a chance. You came in in a situation, two outs, two strikes. Your team has been fantastic in the situation. So, what is your mindset in that moment? Yeah, just battling. You know, these guys have some really good pitchers and,、uh, you know, just trying to、uh, out compete them, you know, put something in play there.、Um, and we did a really good job of that throughout the series so far. Been with this team for a month now, but you've only been active for a handful of weeks. When you think about just coming in the clutch, how special was that for you in that moment? It was fun, really fun. I've seen these guys have some huge hits in just a couple weeks I've been here. You know, a lot of big home runs, so I'm just happy to be part of it. It's your first taste of Dodgers, Diamondbacks, this rivalry that's been coming, the intensity of it. How would you describe what this series has been like so far? Yeah, it's been intense. You know, every game has been a battle so far.、Um, you know, great crowds here, and, and、uh, you can kind of feel the intensity、um, from the outside, and now being on the inside, it's It's that much cooler. Seeing the reaction we saw from you on the field from your teammates, how would you describe just how it was being able to share this moment with them? Yeah, just so excited. You know, it was an amazing feeling out there and、um, just happy we got the win. Congratulations on this one tonight, Tommy. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was Tommy Edmond. He came off the bench in this game. He didn't start. It was Kevin Kiermaier to start in center, but Edmond comes into the game and he made a big impact、uh, all night long. He made a diving catch there in center field, Adrian, a couple of hits, stole a base, and of course he had the two run single there in the ninth. Huge impact. Great, great night offensively. The first hit that,、uh, from the right side was, was a big hit to get the team going there. And then the big two, out, two,、uh, two RBI knock there to. Put him ahead eight to six. That was a huge at bat against a very tough pitcher and a very tough pitch. A great split from the pitcher there. He's able to stay through it and be able to put it right in between the second baseman and the right fielder. Just a great approach. And that's, that's what professional hitters do right there. They stay on pitches like that and they're able to find a way to get, come through in, in the big moments. And like you said, John, that diving play in center field was huge as well. Yeah, I mean, when, I, when he came in and then you look in the eighth inning, he let off with the single and then he gets a stolen base. So he gets himself in the scoring position. The only thing, He gets thrown out of third because that pitcher made a nice play on that one. There he was thinking he was going to be moved over, but nonetheless, still made an impact there, made the impact on defense, and that was a huge clutch hit, especially when a guy's throwing 100, over 100 miles an hour. You're looking for that fastball, and then you get that split finger at 91 down, and you're still able to keep the barrel on the ball. Really impressive.
Well, for anyone out there who was late watching this game and they missed the first inning, Nomar, they missed some history to start the game by the That's Dodgers and even the Diamondbacks, what they did in the bottom of the first. Yeah, you got Shohei Otani, are you not entertained? Goes deep right from the beginning. You're wondering, okay, how about a home run, stolen base? Well, he started off with a home run to center field. What's even mind-boggling, too, is he knew that ball was going now, and that was the deepest part of the field. And then you got Mookie Betts right after that. The next pitch, he just takes a breaking ball, and he hits it, and Freddie Freeman wasn't going to waste any times good to see Freddie Freeman back in the lineup there and man he drove that he got that ball wet over there it ended up landing in the pool kind of bouncing in the pool and then D-backs you know they're gonna bat on they come right back yeah they come right back Corbin Carroll hits this ball to center field Kevin Kiermeyer tries to make a spectacular play fortunately it bounces off the concrete so it gets pretty far away from him Carroll able to go around the bases and then the D-backs continue to put pressure this is a a play that kind of just got a little bit away from T. Oscar and the, you know, the D-backs were able to score, to score a run there. You got, you got a sack fly from Eugenio Suarez there to tie it up and, you know, before you know it, it's, it's a tie game. <laughs> and the, seven knew. runs in the first inning alone. We thought we were in for another one of those wild games and sure enough, true to form, but the Dodgers come out on top for the second straight night, eight to six. Let's head back to the booth in Arizona, check in one final time with Joe Davis and Oral Hershiser. Boy, last night's game, one of the best wins of the year. This was one of the best games of the year, though, and it happened to be a win as well. You know, last night was kind of ugly win. Right. And tonight was a very special win. A lot of components, and you started off with the three home runs at the beginning, and you end it with a couple of young fellas out there trying to get it done and do get it done. Ben Kasparius, oh, my God, first W, three up, three down. All he could do is fill the strike zone. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be game three of this series. Dodgers had a chance coming into this weekend to – they really kind of put the Diamondbacks in their place. Diamondbacks had a chance to completely shift the division, and the Dodgers now lead by six games after winning the first two. The Dodgers are probably thinking about sweeping now and really giving some distance, you know. There's been some bad news with Kershaw's toe. There's been some good news with guys getting healthy like Freddie Freeman and hitting home runs. There's a lot of good things going on, but if you can extend that lead, that will give you some padding. They've played the emotional games. They've been kind of battle-tested. Finish off two more and have a little soft time. It'll be Justin Robleski recalled from AAA to make the start tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back with you on Monday, tomorrow's game on Roku. All right, we had a chance to catch our breath. Why don't we get into the highlights after another long one, an exciting one at Chase Field in Arizona. Clayton Kershaw just placed on the IL before today's game with that toe injury. Top of the first. Adrian, it's Shohei, and he knew it right off the bat, too. He sure did. He got a hanging slider right there. He's able to get extended, get the barrel to the ball. And you know at Chase Field there, even though there's a humidor, that ball's still going to go because Shohei hit it. That was a full extension, got all of it, and that's a tough part of the ballpark to go. <laughs> He's like, how far is that going? That's number 44 Just knows for it. Shohei. He knew it. Next batter. Like this one, you know. Yeah. That's gone, too, and Mookie knew it. Breaking ball. Stays back beautifully. At point to the bullpen. I mean, just a great swing by Mookie Betts. Head down. Driving out of the ballpark. And speaking of another great swing. The very next pitch, Adrian Freddie makes it three in a row. First time in Dodgers history. Freddie knew what he wanted. He went out there looking for a fastball middle away. He's able to get it on the first pitch. He doesn't wait, wait around for another one. He's ready to go, and he gets full extension again. Barrel, home run in the second game to homer in the first inning. Freddie feeling good. Three homers in four pitches for the Dodgers. Three to nothing lead, but bottom of the first. Gavin Stone starting, and Morbin Carroll starting it off. And Kevin Kiermaier, he gets back, he gets back there, and it looks like he may have jumped just a little bit too early because on his way down, he just misses that ball. We've seen him make some great play, but because of that effort, it ends up bouncing back toward the infield, and I'll tell you what, Carroll, he can fly. And man, once he saw that, he was off and running. Right All here. right, so it's three to one. Look at this. Effort, effort. Then. See, on the way down. Oh, if it was on the way up, I think he has that. Corbin Carroll's 19th home run of the year. And then Lourdes Gurriel to left field. Teoscar Hernandez can't make the play. That's a two-run 
knock for Guriel. Yeah, end of the bat right there. The ball is, is actually having an opposite effect that it normally would from a right-handed hitter. So T. Oscar's kind of positioned himself on the other side of the ball there, thinking it's going to go more towards left center. But because it was hit off the end of the bat out in front, it has a little sinking down effect away from him. Ends up going off the end of his club there. So the Diamondbacks have four consecutive hits to start their game. And that sack fly makes it four to three in favor of Arizona after one. Top two, Kevin Kiermeyer Drops down a butt, the throw to third. And that was the right play. The pitcher spun around, got to the ball. They had a play at third base. Just didn't throw it accurately, and they end up dropping the ball, and it allows Shohei Otani to get a sacrifice fly. So that ties the game as Muncie races in, and it's four to four. Dodgers aren't satisfied, though. Freddie Freeman, Adrian, RBI machine. Yes, he is. He, he, when he's going good, he can hit it all over the ballpark, and we know that he's always coming through with the RBI knocks all over the field. This is a great, great thing to see. Bottom of the third inning, it's Gurriel up there, and he takes Gavin Stone deep. This was a good pitch. This is, uh, you know, he just able to get inside the baseball, keep his swing short, and get barrel to the ball. This is, a, you know, a, a pitch that Gavin Stone's going to look back and be like, man, I'm, I made my pitch, you know, tip, tip my hat to the hitter there. Little did we know, this would be the last hit of the game for Arizona. Top five, Gavin Lux. And get something going with two down. Once again, great swing by Gavin Lux. Ball on the inner half. He is utilizing those hands so well, throwing the barrel to that, squaring it up. So a runner in scoring position with two outs. Brings up Max Muncy, and he comes through. Great swing, Max Muncy swinging a hot bat. Comes through big. Nice slide right there for Gavin Lux. Dodgers reclaim the lead at six to five. Taking it to Merrill Kelly in this game. Yeah, just a good piece of hitting, good base running. Well done all around by the Dodgers. All right, bottom of the fifth, Corbin Carroll. Rounds one to Gavin Lux. This is where Gavin Stone, last couple of innings, really settled down. <laughs> yes, he did. Strikes out Jock looking to end it. Great coming, comeback sinker right there. Yep. Well, well, well executed. Jock was not ready for that movement. All right, so bottom of the six, Brent Honeywell Jr. into the game. Yeah, we were shocked because we were talking about we were just showing Gavin Stone. Not really many stressful innings right after that first, and he did an excellent job and only had 84 pitches. And then they go to the bullpen, and Honeywell now has to go out there and try to keep it right there with a one-run lead. Able to put up a zero in the sixth and to hold that lead for the time being. Top of the seventh, one down for Teo. Hits this one well to right center. That's extra bases. Yeah, great piece of hitting, getting on top of a high fastball right there. Able to barrel it up into right center. That's picture perfect swing right there and well placed into right center. Great job. Love Huge opportunity for the Dodgers. Bases loaded one out. Kike's pinch hitting for Max Muncy. Mm -hmm. This is one where, you know, I'm sure they'll probably be asking Dave Roberts what you were thinking here. You know, you pinch hit for Max Muncy. I know lefty on lefty, but you let Max Muncy start against lefties and he's swinging a hot bat. Yeah. Muncy two for two with an RBI. Just came through with a big RBI previous at bat. But Miggy Rowe flies out so the Dodgers waste that opportunity. Bottom of the seventh. After a walk, got a sacrifice bunt, get him into scoring position. And then Corbin Carroll at the plate, a wild pitch, and that runner's on third. Yeah. Yeah. Just tip your hat to the D-backs. They take advantage of the walk. They execute. They get the bunt down. Take advantage of the wild pitch. And what are you supposed to do? Sack fly. But off the bat, we were kind of holding our breath yeah. here. You sure were. Great play by Mookie Betts right there, making that play. Sacrifice fly ties the game. At six, man, that was that really was a great catch. Never forgot how to that play that position out there. He's got six gold gloves. Top of the eighth, Tommy Edmond. Adrian, you talked about it earlier. On the right side here, bangs one in the left field. Yeah, he, great job coming through right there against the lefty, getting things going. Mookie Betts, boy, Edmond caught no man's land after the nice play by Thompson. 
yeah, I was almost able to get through the pitcher there to get him over, but pitcher made a nice play and great reaction looking back at the runner. Freddie Freeman up there. Hmm. That's a shot in the center, his third hit of the night. Freddie Freeman looks so good. You know, after having that series off, having a total of four days off, man, what a difference right now. Staying on the ball looks great. Teoscar swing and a miss. Dodgers can't score. In the top of the eighth, bottom half, Ben Kasparius, major league debut. Well, he came in pumping strikes, and here's a nice catch by Edmund in center. Great play. I love the route he took. He, he, he got to a good angle and was able to come straight in on the ball, diving forward. Great job, great play by Tommy Edmund in center field. Kasparius, Just like that. Little body, like little body language, like, come on, come up with it, and he does. And good job, good placement with that fastball. You got, a, you got an outfielder there. Well done, Ben Kasparius. Welcome to the big leagues. One, two, three inning for him. So we go to the night, still 6-6. Six, six. After Will Smith singled, Gavin Lux 0-2 pitch right back through the middle. A great piece of hitting right there by Gavin Lux staying inside the baseball, hitting it right back up the middle. See Chris Taylor was pinch running for Will Smith, so 2-1, nobody out. And Nomar, Kike Hernandez at the plate after this single. Mm -hmm. To center field. I mean, when you almost take the pitcher's head off, you got to see it like three yeah. times. Absolutely. But how about TK? No sack bunts in six years. That is perfect. Perfect execution right there. Great job getting it down. Now you really put the pressure on the pitcher, putting pressure on the defense to execute here as well. Well done, Kike. So the Dodgers have second and third, one out infield in. Miguel Rojas robbed oh by Guillaume, Adrian. Great play by Louis Guillaume right there, diving full extension. But let's get, let's also say a great piece of hitting by Miguel Rojas yep. right there, staying on this slider against a tough pitcher and is able to hit a line drive, but Guillaume made an incredible play right there. Oh, heartbreak. But then Tommy Edmund with two outs, two strikes, and a split against a guy throwing 103. Great job by Tommy Edmund. I mean, Miguel Rojas feels so bad. He can't believe it. He did everything right. Hit it on the line. They made a great play. You pick up your team. Your teammate come through. Was not an easy ball to hit. Excellent job. Two-run single for Tommy Edmund. Able to stay on that splitter. Makes it 8-6 Dodgers. Evan Phillips comes in. Really the only reliever who didn't pitch yesterday. Gets a quick lazy fly ball to left and then Suarez right to Miggy Rowe. Two up, two down. Josh Bell's the last hope. Chris Taylor in center field's got that. Dodgers find a way for the second straight night to pull it out, 8-6. The final, they're now 82 and 54. Ben Kasparius in his Major League debut gets a win. Evan Phillips' 18th save. Gavin Stone went five innings, allowed five runs, four strikeouts. Freddie Freeman, three for five with his 19th home run, two RBIs. Shohei Otani, one for five, his 44th home run, and two runs batted in. The Dodgers play two more with the Diamondbacks in Arizona. It's 1 p.m. start times tomorrow and on Labor Day. Then Shohei will make his return to Anaheim Tuesday and Wednesday before the Dodgers return home to face the AL Central leading Cleveland Guardians. Tomorrow's game is on Roku. The rest right here on Sportsnet LA. Freddie Freeman capped off the Dodgers first inning. Home run hat trick for some franchise history. Plenty of reaction ahead. Dodgers win another wild one in the desert. Plus Shohei slammed his way into the history books. This walk-off grand slam giving him a 40-40 season faster than anyone else in history. Our top 10 plays of August coming up. Carl's Jr. moment of the game, ninth inning, Adrian Tommy Edmond having his first big Dodger moment. Huge moment right here. Big, big at bat, bases loaded, two outs, coming through against a very, very tough pitch right there off of a really good reliever. You can see the movement on the pitch. He stays through it, head down. Love the follow through on the swing and is able to get just, just the tip of the bat right there, right over the second baseman's head in front of the right fielder. Great moment. Love the energy. Love the excitement from Tommy Edmond right there. And we love the final score. Dodgers 8-6 over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Let's go back to Chase Field. Dave Roberts right now with Kirsten and the media.
Dave, just when you look at this win today and kind of how you guys were able to pull it together, how would you describe just this one? Um, I, I think t tonight was, uh, man, a lot, lot going on, a lot to unpack. A um, lot of grit, fight um, from both teams. And, um, you know, those guys uh, gave us all we could handle. Um, we had no one else left behind Evan tonight. And... Um, just contributions from everyone and uh, you know Gavin gave us everything he had and uh, he was tapped out and then Honeywell comes up from the minors and we just got him back and you know so he gave us all he had for two innings and then you go to Ben Kasperius who makes his major league debut um, in the eighth inning in a packed house and in a pennant race and so uh, he rose to the occasion and found a way to get his first major league win and um, then Evan you know going three out of four and you know knowing knowing no one's behind him and then also offensive we just had a lot of big hits you guys i know tommy edmund was a, someone of interest for a long time but to when you sign him and you get to go for the trade did you kind of envision just moments like this in which he could come in the clutch for this team we did we did um you know he, he's a baseball player high acumen high iq um there's bat to ball doesn't punch much and he's a switch hitter and so you just figure that even with Martinez uh, with stuff like that he's going to give himself a chance to put the ball in play and uh, got a split kind of low bottom of the zone and was able to get it out there for a knock and, and a big hit. Was, the, was that first inning just obviously considering how it started and obviously to give it up before you guys even report now? It was uh, it was you know you're on a high you feel good and three homers in a row and then you go back and um, don't make a couple plays in, in, in the field and, and uh, you know Gavin wasn't sharp early and you give, give up the lead and then so at that point in time Gavin just got a bow his neck which he did and um, again it's just the fight of the guys to, to give up the lead and to not quit and to keep fighting knowing what we had available in the pen that we're going to need to score runs tonight and that's just what they did. You know, being in a tight race can make a team better. Have these last two nights kind of epitomized that, where you just have to find ways to pull out these games, even when things go sideways? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the game. You know, you got to play 27 outs on both sides of the baseball, or both side, both innings, and um, it, it, it's it's bringing out the best in us. Um, I, I think that there's certainly things on the micro that we got to clean up. Some defense. You know, there's a base running play in there, but you know. Overall, the way we're competing and we're, we're winning pitches, you know, the compete, that's uh, that's fun to watch. Seventh and eighth inning with an opportunity to get away. Were you starting to have dark nightmares about extra innings? Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's just, I wasn't concerned about the coverage until the ninth, but, um, you know, at some point you just got to have your chips all in and, you know, if it was a tied game or, you know, Ben was going to continue to go out there. So I felt, you know, we could prolong the game, extend it. Um, but there's a point, you know, contemplating, should he take the ninth? Because you have no one behind Evan. So um, you have to, you know, bet and believe in your players. And Evan did a great job. When you talk about Stone being tapped out, is that because I don't think he's gone over 90 pitches this month? Is it the pitch count or just kind of the way that game played out and the intensity? I, I think a combo of everything. I, I think that um, it's it's his first season, kind of the, the workload that he's had this year, physically and mentally. And um, his stuff today wasn't as crisp as it has been. Um, then you layer in the stressful innings, the pitch count, um, I wanted to give those guys a different look, and so I just don't, I, I don't think he had anything left in the tank tonight. Dave, if you zoom out a little, do you see any parallels with how this game and, and this series really is kind of parallel with the NL West race as a whole? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, I think there's a lot of familiarity. Um, so there's no kind of awe factor from any of these teams that we play in our division. Um, so that we know each other's tendencies and it's just a brawl it really is you know you know all these teams that we play within the division it's an all-out brawl um you can see tory managing it like a postseason game in the sense of leverage guys and down in a down game and you know matching up as best they can so uh it was kind of indicative certainly of, of a division race playoff uh environment
Dave Roberts, the gambling man tonight, Nomar there in Phoenix, he talked about going all in, pushed all of his chips in there, going with Evan Phillips, knowing that Evan Phillips was his last pitcher. So if Evan Phillips by some chance gave up a couple of runs in the ninth inning and we went to extras, who knows who's going to be pitching beyond that, but it all worked out. Yeah, because you can't bring in Kike because there has to be a certain score before you bring in Kike to go in there. But, you know, I, I understand what he says. You've you got to trust your, your players to get the, get the job done, Evan Phillips was able to do that and that is huge so I understand there in the ninth obviously he did say if it was still tied Asparagus would have stayed in there um, but at the same time though too getting up to that I, I don't I didn't really see Gavin Gavin Stone struggling as much as he thought I mean he didn't give up a hit after those first four batters he didn't give he gave up one hit and that was the home run but actually did an excellent job settling in seemed like he was able to find himself in 84 pitches and I know we're talking about workload and all that stuff but we were also talking about how far do you go do you just not do that or nobody gets built up but I think that also set up the fact that you really don't have anybody at the back end where that's your last one that you got to depend on. But nonetheless, they were able to pull it off. I think the offense did a tremendous job coming back in this game. It was a back and forth game. It did feel like the playoff uh, game, like he mentioned. But overall, I think it was just a good win the way they battled. Yeah, 100 percent. I think that, you know, they did an incredible job. And Evan Phillips having a two run lead there make it made it a little more comfortable for Doc to be able to put his chips in, in, into this, this situation right here and, and go all in with Devin Phillips, knowing that he probably didn't have much help behind if anybody ready to, to help there. But two-run lead with Evan Phillips, I feel very comfortable with that. And, uh, you know, he's, he was able to get through it with 10 pitches, just attack the strike zone and uh, the backs hitter. They were also facing the bottom of the lineup, which helped. Maybe they tell Evan Phillips, you're off tomorrow. Right. Say, Evan, you're off tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow the Dodgers found a way to win the first two games of this series. Shohei Otani led off the game with his 44th home run of the season. Mookie and Freddie made it back to back to back to start the game. Plenty more reaction coming up after the Dodgers win at 8-6. Plus, we last saw River Ryan three weeks ago, but he made one of the defensive plays of the year by a pitcher. We'll count down our top 10 plays of August. Coming up. Top tier stat line brought to you by Arco. Nomar, for the first time in Dodgers history, they open a game with three consecutive homers. First time we kept talking about before the game. We were talking about Shohei Otani for the first time. You know, first time. We're going to be saying that a lot. But this time it was collective. The top three hitters, the big three we were talking about, too. They have a big five now with Teoscar and the way Will Smith starting to swing about, which we love to see. But the big three. Tomorrow afternoon. There's no denying what the number one play of the month of August was. After all, August was the month of Shohei Otani. But he wasn't the only one doing special things over the last 31 days. With that, let's celebrate. Celebrate the top 10 plays of the month. Number 10, August 5th, Freddie Freeman coming back after caring for his son, Max. Got a standing ovation, Adrian, at Dodger Stadium. And then the next night, he would record his 500th career double. Love the standing ovation from the fans, from the opposing players. Everybody knows. And then the double right here for his 500th career double. Freddie Freeman been doing this a long time. It's a lot of doubles over the career. Number nine, some great defense from the new guys, Tommy Edmond at short. Tommy Edmond, you know what? I think you're gonna be in another highlight as well <laughs> later on this week, especially after what you did in today's game, but we are gonna highlight your defense here. Welcome to the Dodgers, showing off the glove, the reflexes, the athleticism. Well done, and oh, by the way, here's some other reflexes. How about this comebacker? To Flaherty, <laughs> protect that pretty face he did. Got it out of the oh, way, man. put the glove there. Throw that ball around. Well done, Jack. What a catch. Where did the ball catch him? Number eight, Michael Kopech. How good has he been coming out of that Dodgers bullpen agent since coming over from the White Sox? 0.68 ERA in 13 August games. Well, we know that a two ERA is good, and 0.68 <laughs> is incredible. It is really, really good. He's been lights out. He's been dominating, striking on it. Almost every hitter he sees and just done an incredible job all around. Three saves as well that month. Number seven, more defense. River Ryan used to be a shortstop, Nomar. And he was showing off that uh, that shortstop ability right here, barehanding it. I mean, his back wow. is to first base. And then spinning around and throwing that ball on the line, even Dave Roberts was impressed. And then speaking of athletic, here's another shortstop laying out in right field. <laughs> Over there with Mookie Betts, and he even knows. He's like, whoa, that was pretty good. Number six, August 12th, Mookie back with a bang. 
the new guy, Mookie Betts. He is back. Can't wait for him to hit a home run. And fans, if he hits a home run, I'm doing 50 push-ups right here. So we're rooting for Mookie Betts. Yes. Home run. All right. Mookie Betts back with a bang. And for the first time since May, Max Muncy. That ball is hit hard. Deep right field. And Max Muncy has gone deep in his first game back. Welcome returns for both of those big bats in the Dodgers lineup at number five, August 20th against the Mariners. Jason Hayward, a clutch pinch hit, two run homer to give the Dodgers a 6 3 lead in the eighth inning. Coming up big, Jason Hayward off the bench. Not easy to do, but he did an excellent job pinch hitting this season for the Dodgers. Big moment right there, big at bat. Everybody was excited, out of their seats, high fiving all around. Miss you, Jay. Number four, Teoscar. What a series he had against the Pirates. Had a walk-off against David Bednar, but the day before, let's go to the K-Zone. Three hits off of Paul Skeens, Adrian. Three hits off of Paul Skeens. He's able to drop this ground rule double right here. A little swinging butt. You love those as a hitter. Those are the ones that get you going, and sure enough, they get him going. Gets a pitch right here, 93 miles an hour, and does not miss it. Right center, home run, bomb. Love it, love the swing, and is able to get the walk off right here. You can see off of Bednar, up, up and middle in. Fastball shoots it the other way for the W, Mr. Clutch. Number three, August 31st, that was tonight. No more. Shohei, Mookie, Freddie start the game by going back to back to back. Yeah, because the month isn't over yet. I know we have highlights to show the top 10 before the game, but then, you know, a game like this and what the Dodgers did making history, franchise history with the lead, three, leading off with three home runs. Yeah, we got to show that. It's got to be in there. Absolutely. It's I the mean, first time in history. Dr. History. We got to show, we gotta show the graphic here. We got to show, hey, I mean, all these guys, they knew that it was gone. All of them. It's history in the making. Number two, August 14th, Kevin Kiermeyer, Adrian, showing off the rocket arm in center field. Look at this throw, 99 miles an hour to the plate. 99 miles an hour, rocket to the plate. You see right here, great position, great throw, and I love the catch and tag from Austin Barnes right here. He's able to start his momentum back towards the, the runner right there, back towards the plate so he can catch and make a tag. Another former infielder as well. Number one, August 23rd, Shohei. What a night. There goes Otani, and he's going to steal it. Number 40 for Shohei. 39 home runs and 40 stolen bases for Shohei Otani. Bases loaded, tie game, bottom of the ninth inning. The situation that everybody dreams of, Shohei Otani is living here tonight. 40-40, walk-off grand slam. No. What a moment! History! The sixth member of the 4040 Club makes the most dramatic entry into the club you could imagine. Storybook stuff, Nomar from Shohei. Don't know how this is number one, but anyway, but since it is, I mean, Shohei Otani, I mean, you can't write it any better, can you? Really? I mean, this is the way you walk it off with a grand slam, just number 40, and man season isn't over. We're talking 50-50, people. He's at 44 and 43 right now as we end the month of August. For the 16th time in franchise history, the Dodgers went back to back to back, but the first time they started a game with three consecutive homers. More reaction coming up from a wild night in Arizona. All right, Dodgers and Diamondbacks, the series continues tomorrow in the desert. This game will be on Roku exclusively. It's been a highly entertaining series so far. And tomorrow, I imagine, Adrian, it's not going to be any different. It'll be Justin Robleski starting this one, and I don't know how we top the drama we've seen the last two nights. Yeah, 100%. I feel like the offenses have been feeling good at the plate. They've been coming out strong from the get-go. And then the rest of the game has been very exciting. So. Hopefully we'll get some sort of a similar result. We'll win the game, uh, and it'll be an entertaining game just, just like it has the first two games. I mean, a lot of lead changes, right? It's yes. back and forth, back and forth, a lot of fight, a lot of grit from both sides. Very entertaining. Hopefully the Dodgers come out on top. A great month of August for the Dodgers. They now lead the San Diego Padres and the Arizona Diamondbacks by six full games. And uh, as you like to say, Norma, when you get to September, that's when it starts to feel like playoff baseball. That's what it's great. September is special. It feels like playoff baseball. This is when you start getting ready. This is when the games really, really just take it up another level, which is fun to see. And we've already seen this so far yes. by these two teams.
Ab absolutely. The two games have been great. The atmosphere has been amazing. And, uh, you know, let's keep it going. All right, Dodgers will try to uh, clinch a series win on Sunday afternoon. For Kirsten, Nomar, and Adrian, I'm John. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow's game on Roku. We'll see you Monday. それではここからは総括をお届けしますこの試合はまさに野球の醍醐味を存分に味わえる一戦でした冒頭から歴史が作られましたね大谷ベッツフリーマンの3者連続本塁打という球団史上初の快挙で幕を開けましたしかしダイヤモンドバックスも黙っていませんすぐさま反撃し1回で同点に追いつく粘りを見せましたその後も両チーム一進一退の攻防が続きまるでプレーオフを思わせる緊迫した展開に9回エドマンの2点タイムリーが決勝だとなりドジャースが86で勝利を収めました注目すべきは新人カスパリウスのメジャーデビュー重要な場面で登板し見事に勝利投手となりましたまたフリーマンの5打数3安打1本塁打2打点という活躍も光りましたねこの試合は単なる一戦以上の意味を持ちます両チームの激しい戦いぶりはこれからのペナントレースの激化を予感させるものでした今後の展開にも大いに注目です皆さんはどう思いましたかあなたのご意見やご感想、このようにしていたらよかったなどありましたら、ぜひコメント欄で教えてください。この動画が面白いと思っていただけましたら、チャンネル登録、高評価をお願いいたします。次回の動画でまたお会いいたしましょう。ご視聴ありがとうございました。